Welcome to this short introductory video explaining the Excel Kanban simulation tool created by me, Mark Robinson. You can download the tool from excelville.com and you can contact me by email at mark.robinson.gb at gmail.com. This is the tool. We have a number of items here, a hundred different work items, all of which that need to move from the planned phase to the done phase. This, these states you often see on Agile or Kanban boards in the software development world, but each of these states can easily be changed into anything you like. And much of this spreadsheet is configurable, which I'll explain more about later. At each phase, there are a number of dice. These dice simulate people who are going to work on each phase. So for example, we have one person here for planning, two for design, three for code, and so on. If I roll the dice for one turn, you see that the week number increments. Each turn is one week. And when the dice are rolled, the result is shown here. So for example, I just rolled a one for planning. These are the number of work items, the amount of units that need to be processed for each item. So for planned, for the planning phase, the first item has three work units. Only one resource was generated, which means two are remaining for next week. If I roll the dice again, and again I get a one, so the item doesn't move. For a third time, I get a four, so four plus the two previous ones means that both these items move from the plan to the design phase and so on. I can keep rolling the dice and you see the items move over to the done phase. Sometimes there are resources remaining where nothing can be done. In other words, there's people who are sitting doing nothing. When that happens, the unused resources cell will show up here in red. So the first item is now complete after nine weeks. It took that item six weeks to move from the design phase to the done phase. So we start the timer when they enter the design phase. I'll advance it a few more weeks and you can see the items move across to done. Now let's say you have a customer and the customer says this item is very important. How long will it take you to complete this item? And you look, this is the amount average time to complete, six weeks, minimum five, maximum seven. So you think, okay, it'll probably take seven weeks after it enters the design phase. So it enters the design phase in week 18, should be finished by week 25. Let's see what happens. Roll the dice, reach week 25 and it's still under testing. Go a few more times. And it enters actually in week 31. It actually took 13 weeks. So obviously a customer is not very happy. And the customer says, now this item is very important. How long will it take you to complete this item? And you think, well, now the maximum is 14. So let's promise 14. It can't be worse than that. So let's just advance it all the way to the end and see what happens. It's still under the test phase and you see there's a big bottleneck building up in testing and that bottleneck is what's causing this delay so it actually it takes 30 weeks for this item to be complete so let's now run this all the way to the end for all 100 items watch what happens to the average time to complete see it only increases as does the standard deviation because of this huge bottleneck under testing so this means that your items are taking longer and longer to be accomplished, even though the work to accomplish them is the same in each case, and the standard deviation increases, which means that the items are taking longer and they're becoming less predictable. Not very satisfactory for your customer, particularly in a changing environment where the customer keeps changing their priorities. If the customer suddenly wants item 100 to be done instead of item 20, then they're going to have a long wait because the average time is so long. So let's take a screenshot of this. Put that here. We'll compare that in a moment. Let's reset this 
and see how we could do this in a different way. Here we have a work in progress limit, a Kanban limit. So let's set it to two in each phase. This means that there will be a maximum of two items allowed in the design phase, two in the code and so on at a time. So let's see the effect when I start rolling the dice. You see the items gradually move across. But at no case are we allowing more than two items in every phase. So that sometimes means that the coders will have nothing to do because testers are completely full. They're only allowed to put one into this column when testers say we have time available. We have a, a resource available to handle this. So you can see that the uh, items move across just as previously. Let's say now that your customer says this is a very important item. How long will it take this one to be complete? And you look at your average time is 10 weeks, minimum seven, maximum 11. So you say, okay, maybe 11 weeks. Let's see what happens. Roll the dice, the item moves across. It actually takes eight weeks, which is pretty good. The customer's very happy. Then the customer says, okay, now I have this item. This is very important. How long will it take this item to be complete? And you say again, 11 weeks since that's the worst case. Let's see what happens. From the time it enters the design phase in week 40, so it should be finished by week 51. Let's see what happens. Week 50, we're a week early. So that's pretty good. Let's run it to the end and watch what happens now to the average time to complete and to the maximum. You see, the average time to complete stays about the same. Also, the standard deviation stays about the same, which means that your projects become very predictable. Now, let's compare these two. And you see that in the first case, while the total time was slightly less, the average time was much more. So each item on its own takes a lot longer to be completed, even though the throughput time for all items might be faster. This means that in a changing environment, when the requirements change a lot, the priorities change, it's much better to have a work in progress limit. Then you don't have big bottlenecks building up. That's the principle of Kanban. Let's reset this and show you one other trick with this. Let's remove the work in progress limit and let's do something else. Let's talk about the theory of constraints. You see, just now, design phase was hardly ever a problem, but the test phase was. So let's move one of these design resources to test. Let's just run it to the end and watch what happens. You see, the average time to complete stays low and the standard deviation also stays low. In fact, the average time to complete stays lower than in the last case where we had Kanban limits. So what this means is Kanban is a very good way to start reducing the chaos in your project, making your items more predictable. But if you really want to make items, get items through your system faster, then you really need to start finding bottlenecks in your system and removing them. And you see the total time is also less. So that's really how the spreadsheet works. Let me reset and show you a couple of other things. Here is a hidden dashboard and it does a number of things. For example, I can change the total number of tasks. Change it to 10, press reset, total number of tasks changes to 10. I can also switch randomize on and off. Currently I've got dice to determine the results. But if I switch that off, then each time I'll have two uh, work items in the planning, a five under design and so on. And I can also change each of these numbers to whatever I want. The comment gives you the default value, so I can change it to anything. Also over here, I have default values for when the randomize is off. So currently, default here is always three for planning, two for design and so on. But I can switch to randomize on here and if I press reset, you see that I get random numbers. And this min and max determines the uh, min and max of these random numbers. So for example, if I change this to seven, 
and reset again, you can see that the plan goes anything from 2 to 7. So this spreadsheet is completely configurable and you can learn huge amounts by trying out different values. Full details are in the instructions here, where you can also link to my video where I explain it more in front of a group, my LinkedIn information and the email I just mentioned. And you can see the shortcut keys. Thanks very much for your attention.